It's no secret that Enzo Ferrari was a fierce, proud, and often incredibly harsh man. In fact, he would famously call the customers of his own cars fools for buying them. You won't get that sort of service from a Kia dealership. But you can honestly see where it comes from. If everybody was telling me that I made the best cars the planet had ever seen, I'd be a bit of a dickhead too. But in 1961, that hubris all came crashing down and nearly ended the prancing horse for good. But since Ferrari's still around, what happened? And what does it have to do with the raging bull that always seems to be a horn in Enzo's side? In 1956, Enzo's first son Alfredo, aka Dino, tragically passed away due to muscular dystrophy. As you can imagine, this took a toll on Enzo, and as the years passed, he began to step back from the prancing horse. But there to fill his presence at the factory was Miss Ferrari, Laura Garello. She was Enzo's wife at the time, and was known to be as cruel as Il Commendatore himself. Laura liked to pick fights with one of the sales managers, Girolamo Gardini. In 1961, just like rod number four of my old engine, he had had enough. He went to Enzo with a choice. Either Enzo asks his wife to lay off him and take a step back from meddling with Ferrari business, or he'd leave the company. This is Enzo we're talking about though, so Gardini was sent packing. However, just like many of Enzo's decisions, it had consequences. Eight of some of Ferrari's most influential workers, including Giotto Bizzarini, the head of sports car development, who was partly responsible for the 250 GTO, Carlo Chitti, the chief engineer, and Romolo Tavoni, the manager of Scuderia Ferrari, all decided that the firing of Gardini couldn't be swept under the rug. In the least Italian turn of events since the diesel Maserati Ghibli, the group hired a lawyer to write a letter to Enzo, stating that the eight of them supported Gardini's statements and that Laura needed to stop interfering with the business. The story goes that shortly after the letter had been given to Enzo in October 1961, during the weekly managers meeting, the eight men were silently given an envelope each. Inside each one was one month's wages and a note telling them to leave the premises. Get out of here! Enzo turned to the eighth and said, if this is how you feel, there is the door, here is your money, out. Now under normal circumstances, this would have just been another classic Enzo moment to add to the list. But he chose to do this when Ferrari was closer to the verge of bankruptcy than I was after I bought my fourth project car. Not the smartest time to fire your eight best employees. In fact, Enzo only got out of the near bankruptcy by playing off Ford against Fiat in a bid to buy Ferrari, making even more enemies in the process. So, where does Lamborghini come into all of this? Many of you will know the famous argument that started it all, but for those of you that don't, here's a quick recap. Ferruccio Lamborghini was an industrialist and tractor manufacturer long before he ever built cars. He did have an interest in cars, however, as he owned multiple Ferraris throughout the years. The problem arose when his Ferrari 250 GT kept seeming to burn through clutches. After the third or fourth clutch change at the Ferrari factory, he decided to have a mechanic at his tractor factory change it instead, and what that mechanic found led to the creation of the Raging Bull. The mechanic showed Ferruccio the clutch, and noted that it was the exact same commercial clutch that they installed on their lightweight tractors. Ferruccio was furious, stating, For my tractor I pay 10 lira for this part, and I pay Ferrari a thousand for the very same one. The next time he and Enzo met, he called him out for it. You build your beautiful cars with my tractor parts. Now if you've learned anything about Enzo up to this point, you'll know that his response was not that of an apology. You are a tractor driver, you are a farmer. You shouldn't complain driving my cars, because they're the best cars in the world. Fruccio responded with the immortal words, Oh yes, I am a farmer. I'll show you how to make a sports car, and I'll do a sports car by myself, to show you how a sports car has to be. So the wheels were set in motion. Fruccio had decided to take on Il Commendatore, and for that, he would need to build a car. The chassis was developed by Dallara, the body Scalione, and finally came time for an engine. Fruccio commissioned an engineering firm called Societa Autostar to design a V12 engine that would be similar in displacement to Ferrari's Colombo V12 even offering a bonus for every horsepower it could make over Ferrari's unit. Well, that sounds like a doable project, especially for someone who, I don't know, maybe uh, had experience building engines like the Ferrari V12. Flashback to 1962, after the eight executives had been fired from Ferrari, they formed a new car company called Automobili Turismo Esport, with the sole goal of beating their old employer in the racing game. 
However, we don't need to get too much into that because the company failed quicker than a Subaru Ringland. After ATS, Giotto started his own engineering firm, and would you like to guess what it was called? Societa Auto Star was Bizzarini's own engineering firm, and so he was hired to build the Ferrari beating V12. Giotto got to work and created the 3.5 litre Bizzarini V12. All was not without hiccup though. Ferruccio wanted the engine to be well mannered and usable on the road. So when Bizzarini's offering featured a dry sump system and a screaming 9,800 RPM rev limit, Ferruccio wasn't happy and asked for the engine to be toned down. However, asking an Italian engineer to make less power out of their engine is like asking him to choose their favourite pasta sauce. It's just not going to happen. This prompted Mr. Lamborghini to refuse to pay Giotto until the courts ordered him to do so. In the end, the engine was toned down and the rev limit brought down to a more roadworthy standard. Regardless of this infighting, the Bizzarini V12 made its way into the first car, the 350 GT, with a badge and a heart that came from two different stories of wanting retribution for Enzo's mean words. The Bizzarini V12 would serve as the beating Lamborghini heart all the way up until the Murcielago's last breath in 2010 with its 6.5 litre evolution, a true icon of engineering and a permanent reminder to Enzo of its actions. And ultimately that's the incredible thing. On so many occasions, Enzo's actions rubbed people up the wrong way so much that they were inspired to take him on at his own game. And in the process of trying to beat the old man, we've been given some incredible cars and engines that would have never existed otherwise. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the Car Throttle YouTube channel if you aren't already, and let us know in the comments if you're enjoying these kinds of videos. Also, make sure you head to the Car Throttle Instagram and Facebook pages for more daily automotive videos and content.